this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bella's Designs. I'm doing a fall card for this video tutorial and it features creating a background by blowing bubbles with acrylic paint. There are other ways that you can do your bubble blowing techniques. Uh, Robin Riley actually did a Talk Crafty to me and she used um, other ingredients. She used uh, dish soap and um, some other paint products. So you can use whatever you like. I like the acrylic paint because it's a pretty inexpensive and I like using the bubble product. So you can choose what you like, but this is what I'm going to show you today. I hope you have fun trying this background technique. So let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies that we'll be using today. We're going to use a Lavinia Multifarious Smooth and Supreme cardstock. I'm leaving my cardstock large so that when we do our background, I'll be able to pick and choose before I cut down to the four and three quarters by three and a half inches art card that we're actually going to use. This allows me to pick the part of the design that I really like the best. We will be creating a, a frame around our art card. So I have just taken a piece of uh, cardstock, cut, th cut that to be five inches by three and three quarter inches. For our card base, I just took a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I cut that piece in, in half and then we just folded that piece in half to create our card base. As I said before, we'll be using acrylic paints. I just actually bought the fairly inexpensive ones at the hobby store. Um, today what I'm going to use is going to be a red rust color and a terracotta color. I have found that you need to use a little bit um, deeper and brighter uh, colors than something pale. I was going to use a yellow, but I found that the yellow does not show up quite as much. So you need a really bold color to really get your bubbles to show up well. We'll also then just need a little bottle of bubbles, just the kids kind of bubbles. Um, a shallow container will work the best for you. Um, this is the one that I have. I probably could have even gone a little bit more shallow, but this, this is a really good size to use. You can also use like a pie tin, something like that. You just need to make sure that you have a fairly small base because you don't want your liquid spreading out really far. You'll also need a couple of straws. Since I've got two colors, I'm going to be using two different color of straw, uh, two different straws for those colors. For our um, the stamps that we're going to use today, I have chosen to use the Lavinia Tree of Hope stamp. This one is LAV658. We'll be using the Small Reindeer LAV487. We'll be using the Lavinia Oak Leaf Flourish. We'll actually be using both of the leaves to create our design, LAV760. And then I'm going to be using a sentiment stamp and I just have a package that has a whole bunch of fall sentiments on it. And this one I'm just going to use the leaves are falling, autumn is calling. We will also be using our black VersaFine Claire ink to stamp our images. And to enhance our background just a little bit, I'll be using the Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink and the Wild Honey Distress Ink. And then to create a little bit of shadowing and, and our, our frame distressing, we'll be using the Black Soot. We will use blending brushes to add a little bit of color and I have a little dauber here as what I use to create my shadows. We'll be using a fine tip black pen to create our little grass area down here on the bottom. And then we'll also be using the Sakura Jelly Roll pen. This is a white one to add just a little bit of interest to the leaves. I'll be using a stamping platform today. That to me helps make it a lot easier to stamp my images down. And we will be putting our project together. I'm just going to use the running tape to do that. All right, let me go ahead and show you one example real quick before we get started on our project. This is actually another background that I created using bubbles. 
So you can see that it gives you just a really fun and unique looking background. And uh, if you just want a very light smattering of the bubbles, you would only um, dip your card into the bubble mixture one or two times to just to get a light scattering of it. But I really liked the way this one turned out and I dipped it quite a few times. So we'll experiment around with that and know that no two uh, bubble backgrounds are ever going to look the same because obviously bubbles are uh, a very non-controllable uh, kind of medium to use. All right, so let's get started working on our project. So this technique is a rather messy technique. So what I have done is just gotten a piece of, a pretty large piece of just some white paper that I had bought on a roll. And I'm going to use that to, to cover my surface as much as I can. Uh, this, when you blow the bubbles, you may not seem like you're getting any spatters, but it does. So this, this just helps to keep it a little bit cleaner and make it a little easier for your cleanup process. First thing we're going to want to do is mix our bubble and acrylic paint mixture. I have already done my terracotta, but I will um, kind of show you the process of how to mix it up with the red rust. So I'm going to take my red rust and I'm just going to squirt some down in the bottom. It's not really a very precise technique necessarily. Just put in a big glob of it. Um, you can always make it darker if you like to uh, later on down the road as you're blowing your bubbles by adding more of the ink or the paint. As you go along, if you feel like your colors are too dark, just add a little bit more bubble solution. So I'm going to take my bubble solution and pour some in and I'm you know I'm probably gonna go half an inch to make sure that I've got plenty in there so that I can blow the bubbles fairly smoothly hopefully Then I'm just gonna take my straw and mix that up really nice give it a good thorough stir so that you know that you've got your paint and your bubbles completely mixed. What you're also going to do is between each time that you blow bubbles you are going to want to stir it because it will separate out uh, and make it not quite so dark for your bubbles. Alright so now we've got that solution all ready to go. I think we will go ahead and start with the red rust color. As I said before I've taken a little bit larger piece of the Lavinia cardstock because I want to be able to kind of pick and choose how I want to cut my card to get the dimensions for the actual finished card. And since you don't know what the bubbles are going to do, this just gives you a little bit of, of wiggle room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my straw into the solution and then I'm going to blow. And what I want is I want the bubbles to come up above the top of the rim. Then I'm going to take this and lay it on top and actually I'm not getting enough bubble coming to the top so I may end up having to add a little more solution. So let's try it again. There we go. We're just going to lay our card down on top and I may actually scoot this over to the side a little bit. I don't mind the spatters on the card, but I think I'd like to have it a little bit less of the spatter. So here we go. And I'm finding, this is very interesting, this is a different bubble solution than what I used um, before, and I don't seem to be getting as much bubbles. So I'm going to actually add a little bit more. Bring my level up a little higher. 
And that's one of the things when you use a technique that has uh, it's a little bit less controllable. You need to experiment around and really find out what works best. There we go. We're just going to tap our card lightly on top to start getting a little bit of the bubble effect. Now here you see that we've got bubbles that haven't popped. You don't want to try and blow on them or use a heat tool or anything like that to, let, to get the bubbles to pop. You really want to let it do it on its own because then that way is that you actually create the bubble pattern effect. So we, we, as you can see, the bubbles are starting to pop and it might be a little harder to see far away. Let me see if I can get this to focus in so that you can start seeing the effects that the bubbles are having on the card. So we're just going to keep doing this and I'll, I'll speed up the video so that we don't have to sit there and can keep watching me blow the bubbles but you will see the effect that we get as we go along. So now let's go ahead and move on to our next color. If we feel like we need to come back in and add a little bit more of the red, we can do that. So now I've got the terracotta. I'm going to give that a good stir and we're going to do the exact same thing with the terracotta. Okay, and there we go for our doing our bubbles. We'll move on now to adding just a little bit of color. Okay, now before we go ahead and add some extra color, I do want to point out that uh, different sizes of straws will also make a difference on the size of your bubbles. So this one is a much bigger straw and it makes a little bit bigger bubbles and this is a little bit finer straw. So I'll show you that. We're just going to kind of do a quick demo so we can get a few small bubbles perhaps on our project here. And with that we get a little bit of a smaller bubble look. So it really depends upon the look that you're wanting for your, your project. But let me point out though, if you see little bitty teeny bubbles, I know that's probably really hard to see, the very, very, very tiny, tiny bubbles, you don't want to use those. Try and dip them in something that's just a little bit bigger. So, um, because then those will stay on your card for a long time and will make very, very tiny little things. Now, if you have patience and want to, to wait for those tiny bubbles to get that effect, um, then you can do that, but normally you're going to want something a little bit bigger than the little teeny, teeny, tiny foamy ones. So let's do one more blow.
And you can see I still got some big ones with that one, so I'm going to just try and concentrate on picking up bubbles over on the side. And hopefully with the camera here, you can see the really unique little patterns that we are creating with our bubble blowing. Okay, one more little shot at it, and then we will move on. All right. I think that's got a very cool looking background that we can definitely work with. So now I'm going to set my bubble solution aside and we can remove our splatter sheet here. And even with my splatter sheet, I've got it everywhere, so I will have to do a little bit of a cleanup work. So just keep that in mind that it, it does splatter quite a bit and gets all over everything. My hands included. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this card and I'm going to look at it and see if I can determine what part I really like. And I think I kind of like the look over here more on this side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the camera and I'm going to go cut this piece now down to the four and three quarters by the three and a half inch size that I'm wanting my, my finished card to be. So let me go cut this. I'll bring it back so you can see what it looks like and we can then start on doing the, the additional colors that I want to add just a little bit. Hold on just a moment. Okay, so now I have cut this down to the size that I want and into the place that I want because I, I really like the look of these bubbles right around in here. That's why I like to use the bigger piece. That way I can cut it out exactly the way I like for it to look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my inks, the Distress inks, the Wild Honey, and the spice marmalade. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color. This actually turned out really well for how I want it to look, so I don't feel like I need to add a whole lot of color. But I just want to add just a tiny little bit, just to get a little bit more. And the reason I like the wild honey is that puts in a little bit of that yellow color that I couldn't really get with the acrylic bubbles. So it just gives it to me that little bit more of that fallish color. So we'll just add a little tiny bit of that across the surface to give just a little bit of yellow color. And now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of the Spice Marmalade, although the mixture of the Red Rust and the um, Terracotta really did a nice orange color, but I'll add just a touch more just to make it pop just a little bit. And I feel like when I add a little bit of color, it actually makes the bubbles, look at this, look how it makes them just pop up and show up a little bit more. It's almost like it highlights the bubble design. So we just wrap that around just a little bit more. And now we have this really fabulous background. So now we can go ahead and start working on doing our stamping. We'll start out with our tree. And let me grab my stamping platform. That was right here a moment ago. There it is. I had moved it out of the way so that I wouldn't get the bubble blowing all over it. So we'll take our stamping platform and lay our card on it. As you can see, my stamping platform has a sticky grid on it. I use that instead of the magnets. I don't like having to work around magnets. Um, so this just makes a great way where you can stick it down and not have to worry about that. So I'm going to start out with our Tree of Hope and pulled it out here a second ago. And what I want to do is just line it up 
over here on this side because we're going to go ahead and put our reindeer here and get that where we want it. I'm going to use our Versifying Claire Nocturne. Get the lid off of it. There we go. I always like really sharp, dark images, so I always use quite a bit of ink on my stamps. The nice thing about the stamping platform is if it doesn't get quite as dark as I like, I can always go back in and do a second time. Alright, and I think I want that image just a little darker, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little ink. Do it a second time. I did get some ink out of place, so I'm going to try and rub carefully so I don't get it smeared on my card top. I'll take a little piece of baby wipe and clean that up real quick before I finish the stamping. Because you do not want to get a nice smear on there because that will ruin the effect. All right, there's a very nice image. Take my baby wipe and clean off my stamp. And now we will move on to the reindeer. We're going to put our reindeer mm, right. Oops, he's got a leaf stuck to him. All right, try again. Put him right about there. We want it to look like he's looking up into the tree. Ink up our reindeer. And a lot of times I do have to ink up these solid stamps a little more um, often. You may have to do it twice because the solid stamps sometimes don't get quite as much ink to get onto the paper the very first round that you go. Just a little bit more. There we go. And now we are ready to move on to the leaves. The leaves will take you a few minutes, but I think you get a really nice effect from it. We're going to be using both the small stamp and the large stamp. Um, I'll grab that back out so you can see, look. Um, so we'll be using both of these. I'll probably go ahead and speed up the camera so that you don't have to watch all the different times that I make the little leaves because it is quite a bit of work on the images here but I'll just do a couple and then we'll speed it up so you can get the idea so just put a little ink on that and stamp it down and find another spot I really like the little stem. You can line it up with the branch so it looks a little more natural coming off the tree. And 
and then we can do our bigger stamp kind of do that one more on the interior part so we can get some pretty good amount of foliage okay and now I'm going to finish up putting all the leaves on Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put one little leaf right there kind of on the branch by itself that he's kind of looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to cover up all but one tiny little leaf. And the way I'm going to do that is just I'm going to just take a little piece of painter's tape cover up all but the leaves that I want to be on the branch showing up and if I need to tear a little piece to get it right there I'll do that so then basically it's kind of hard to see but all I've got is that one tiny little leaf showing so I'm going to take that figure out what spot I want so I want him just to be on the edge of this little branch right where the deer is the reindeer is looking up at it well, let's see if I can get it right where I want it there we go now leaving the, the tape on there I'm going to go ahead and ink up my my stamp then I'm going to remove that piece of tape so that the only thing that is showing and it's hard to see but just that one little leaf is the only one that's got ink on it and then I'm going to close that over so that I get that one leaf by itself there on the branch and I'm going to do that one more time because I want to put just a little leaf that's fallen down onto the ground so I'll grab another little piece of tape put that leaf where I want it to be laying on the ground Add my ink like I did on the first one, remove the tape, and there's my little leaf. So now we're done with the stamping and we can move on to putting in our little details. Okay, so now we're going to start on our details. I have removed the card from the stamping platform, so you don't need to use that right now. And we're going to go in and add in a little bit of this grassy kind of area using a fine tip black pen that just grounds everything and keeps it from just floating around on our card. And basically all I'm doing is just kind of drawing a few little lines and adding some sprigs of grass. I'm going to do that both around the bottom of the tree and around our deer. I'm also going to put just a little bit right underneath our leaf and then a few little random spots just add a little bit of what looks like a little bit of grass
All right, then that just gives the tree and the reindeer a little bit more base. And you can do as many or as few as you like. Just kind of eyeball it to see what you like. Then to give them just a little bit more of a reality, we're going to take our black soot. And I like to use these tiny little daubers. I feel like I have a little bit more control with them. And we're just going to add a little bit of shadowing. Right at the base of our tree. And underneath our deer. And that just gives it depth. Alright, and so the final thing that we need to do is to stamp our sentiment. I will go ahead and bring back the stamping platform for that. Just plop that on there. Move my stuff here on the side so that I don't knock it off. And then we're going to pull out the think the one I want to use. We'll see how it fits in our space there. Leaves are falling. Autumn is calling. Make sure we have that lined up. All right. And I'm going to stamp that, put the ink on that real, real quick. Now we have one more step before we put it together. And with that, we're just going to take a little bit of that black soot and the dauber again. And make just a little bit of a frame, just kind of a little smoky frame around the edge. I like doing the frames because to me it gives it a little bit of a more finished look and draws the eye towards the center. I like the little bit of the distressed look as well. All right, so let's put our card together. I'm going to start out by taking our card base and we're going to mount that on top and I am going to wipe a little bit of the ink off my hands because I sure don't want to smear it onto my card. So we will turn this upside down, grab our running tape sure we get it lined up and then we will get our card base and mount that and I am going to grab let's see like a little white piece of paper here just so I can see it a little bit better Just 
Is that centered? And there we go. There's our card. And we have this really cool looking unique background. When I take the picture of it, I think it will show up a lot better and I'll post it at the end of this video so that you can see what the final product looks like. So thank you so much for watching my video tutorial today. I hope that you will give the bubble blowing background technique a try. For more tutorials, please go to the DelBellosDesigns.com website and look at the design team members page. Have a great day! So I have a little postscript that I'm going to add here. Unfortunately, I left off one of the steps, um, which was adding in the white veining on the leaves. Um, I apologize for that, but I do want to show you that basically what I'm doing is taking the white Sakura jelly pen or whatever white pen you might have on hand and I'm just going to go into the leaves and draw those veins on with the white ink. Just really quickly just draw them in there then on the acorns I'm just going to try and highlight where the caps are on the acorns. But as you can see this just gives it a little bit more reality and gives it a little bit of a pop when you add the white to the leaves there. So again, I apologize for leaving that step out. And of course, you'll see the finished product when I post the picture at the end of this video. Thanks!